Hey there, and welcome to the Providence Podcast. I'm Sister Leslie, and I'm so glad you're here. This morning, as I was praying, I was reflecting on those words we say over and over throughout Advent. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Emmanuel. It occurred to me that this kind of flips the switch a little. Most of the time, God is doing the inviting, inviting us into deeper prayer, inviting us to respond to God, inviting us to even notice God. But throughout Advent, over and over, we invite Christ to come. In fact, isn't that what Advent means? Coming, dawning, coming to birth. O come, O come, Emmanuel. What a delight that must be to God when we extend that invitation in return. So as we enter this fourth week of Advent, I hope we continue to invite Christ to come to us and trust that God hears and responds with great delight. And now Sister Stephanie will read our scripture passage and we'll go from there. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste to a town of Judah where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leaped in her womb, and and Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For as the moment the, for at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed are you who believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. The Gospel of the Lord. Throughout Advent, We've been listening to the voices of the prophets from of old. But this Sunday, we meet two prophets of the New Testament, Elizabeth and Mary. Are you surprised to think of them as prophets? Well, I am, actually. But once I read the visitation story this way, I can't unsee it. And I don't want to. I always looked at this story as an affirmation of the beautiful ways people mentor and support each other. Mary goes in haste to Elizabeth. Why? Is it because she's pregnant and unmarried and things back home suddenly got pretty dicey? Is it because she's had this tremendous experience of God and doesn't know what to do with it? So she seeks out her older cousin who has also just had an experience of God. Maybe Elizabeth can offer some help or advice. I still appreciate how this story depicts the relationship between Elizabeth and Mary. But what I see is not simply a greeting from one woman to another. What I notice is Elizabeth prophesying like all the other prophets throughout scripture. It says she's filled with the Holy Spirit. And so she speaks in the prophet's voice for God. She affirms the holiness of Mary's conception and the nature of this child growing in Mary's womb as the Holy One of Israel. And then she blesses her, not necessarily for her willingness to bear this child, but for her belief She says, Blessed are you who believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. And I I guess I've always focused on Mary's yes to God, but it's true that in order to give consent so freely and generously, she must have also believed what the angel told her. 
Signs of a pregnancy would be a sure confirmation that something extraordinary happened. So it likely wasn't hard to believe that promise. God's promise, though, is more than just the conception of this child. It extends beyond Mary and encompasses the promises spoken by all the prophets before her. God's promise works through Mary, but it's a promise of a Savior for all humanity. She's blessed for believing and living into the whole of God's promise to all of us. If you read a little further into the Gospel of Luke, you can see that Mary's response to Elizabeth's prophetic utterance is to prophesy herself. My soul magnifies the Lord is a song and a prayer. We recite it every day at evening prayer. So it's easy to think that it's tame and pretty. But if you really stop to look at the canticle of Mary, it's subversive. It speaks of overthrowing power. It affirms that the poor and oppressed will rise up. Once I acknowledge that, it's hard to see Mary as some timid girl from the country. She's a prophet in her own right, assenting to her role in God's promise and then proclaiming what its fulfillment will look like. If you're one of the poor of the world, one of the oppressed and marginalized, well, this is good news. But if you're the oppressor, if dominance is your game, you'd better watch out. And isn't that the message of every prophet? As they say, prophets comfort the afflicted, but afflict the comfortable. Where we fall in the dichotomy of powerful versus powerless is probably a topic for another day. But what I reflect on now is that last line from Elizabeth. Blessed are you who believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. I have to ask myself whether or not I too believe in the fulfillment of God's promises. What has God promised? I think of mercy and presence, love, redemption. God has promised a kingdom of love and equity and has sent us on a mission to both build and proclaim it. What does this look like for us? I don't know. The church appears to be in a state of flux. Fewer people are coming to church these days, and that's true across all denominations. I don't say that as a judgment, and I trust people have their reasons. But I guess what I'm wondering is what will become of those of us who are still here? Will we continue to have a community? Will we always be together in mission? Will the church be there to serve people in the future? I just don't know. And besides church, there's plenty of chaos in our midst. I mean, pandemic, still, financial instability, political crises throughout the world, natural disasters, terrible natural disasters. It's overwhelming. With all that's happening, believing in the fulfillment of God's promises is hard. Honestly, I don't know if I have the gritty faith of Mary and Elizabeth. And yet, I do trust that God has never failed us. People fail each other, to be sure, but God has never failed us. And if it looks like God is failing us or not showing up, or is deaf to our cries, then it's probably not the end of the story. Ask the Israelites. It's just a long story. Mary's story doesn't end with a mysterious conception and Elizabeth's proclamation. 
It doesn't even really begin there. It begins with the dream of the prophets who came before, and it's followed by some intense difficulties. A lot of ordinary stuff we don't hear about. A few brief but intense years of Jesus' ministry, great suffering, and then resurrection. The story doesn't end there, in fact. It continues in the Word made flesh, enfleshed in the community that keeps living and breathing today. Living and breathing and serving. And I think that includes those who come to church and also even those who don't. I kind of wonder, is it harder to believe in God's promises as an impoverished single mother in an occupied country in the first century, or as a person of faith today with our unique challenges, uncertainty, and chaos? I don't know, but I do take comfort from Mary and Elizabeth two of God's prophets who model deep faith amidst great difficulty. I can believe in the promises of which they speak. We are all called to bear Christ into the world and to share the good news in our own context. It may be true that we are surrounded by chaos and uncertainty, but the reality is that the future is always uncertain for Elizabeth and Mary and for us too. Prophets don't predict the future. They speak a word of hope. They speak for God. God keeps making promises and when those are fulfilled, God makes more promises. Blessed are we who believe that what was spoken to us by God would be fulfilled. And God is still speaking. And now let's spend a little time just reflecting together. What would the fulfillment of God's promises look like for you? Do you believe in God's promises? What helps you to believe? And what makes it hard to believe? What do you need from God as you move through this fourth week of Advent? Maybe take some time to consider this and to ask God for what you need. Thanks for listening to the Providence Podcast. I hope you continue to connect with God's Space and, of course, the Sisters of Divine Providence of Kentucky as well. As you enter this week, may you notice all the ways that God cares for you. And may we all take good care of each other. Peace. Peace.